to my channel. So, as you can see, I've been working a lot on getting the finishing touches done on my office. It should be a lot less echoey in here. Should feel a little bit more cozy. I definitely wanted a more relaxed vibe with my new background. I feel like my past videos have just been, you could like feel my anxiety from the type of things that I cover and the topics that I choose to talk about on this channel. And I feel like the background just kind of made it chilling and I needed to just, you know, kind of calm everything down a little bit when I'm talking about the things that I do. So I hope you guys are enjoying my new background so far. I do want to let you guys know that there may or may not be a video up next Saturday. This upcoming Monday, the 6th, is my birthday. So I am kind of taking some mental time to hang out with my family and be with the people closest to me. I'm going to try my hardest to have a video out, but I will be out of town. So it could make things a little bit complicated. I want to say how freaking excited I am because look at where we are at. We are about to hit 200,000 subscribers, you guys, and I could never, ever, ever thank you enough. I will never forget reaching all the different little milestones along the way. I remember hitting 20,000 like it was yesterday. It's just absolutely wild to me, and I want to just say a massive thank you to you guys because you've stuck with me through a lot of things happening on this channel, ups and downs, and this is the best birthday present that I could ever ask for. So now I'm going to stop rambling and, you know, like I always do in the beginning of my videos, that drives you guys bonkers, and I'm going to jump into today's case. So I told you guys last week in the Brandy Myers case that this was also going to be a solved no body. The circumstances of this case are very similar to Brandy's, but they are bumped up a whole nother notch. So... This is going to be an interesting ride and it's heartbreaking, so just sit down, prepare yourself, and really, really be prepared to share this information once you're done with this video. So today's video is on Sapphire Wiggins, and there's a lot of different dates involved in this. There's a lot of questionable information happening on questionable days, and it's a whole ton of information that was found out in a very bizarre order. So instead of it making sense all at first to authorities, and loved ones of the people involved. It just kind of was a massive mess. So Sapphire was reported missing on October 19th, 2014 from Atlantic City in New Jersey. And that date I know for a fact. But I also am pretty sure that the last time her family heard from her was October the 15th. So just a few days before when she had spoken on the phone with her sister. But then to throw just another date out there, the last time she was physically seen was on October 17th. So we're working with a bunch of different days here and there are a ton of insane situations in those couple of days. So Sapphire was an incredibly outgoing young woman. She was only 22 years old. So she had a lot of life ahead of her. She had a beautiful six-year-old little boy at the time that she disappeared. She loved being a mother, but unfortunately her mind and her heart were caught up in a tricky, tricky situation. Sapphire had been dating a 50-year-old man named Kevin Shelton, and they had been together for what is guessed to be about six months. You'll see why this is also complicated further into the video but no one really knew how long they had been together but they were deeply in love or at least Sapphire was deeply deeply in love with Kevin she had the letter K or the name Kevin no one's quite sure tattooed on her left ring finger her Facebook was absolutely covered in pictures of them together and they looked like they were so happy and they were so madly in love with each other there were statuses on her Facebook about their unbreakable bond and about how much he treated her like a woman was supposed to be treated and that he was the man she was going to marry one day and she said this so matter-of-fact and anyone who saw her Facebook or you know knew about her knew that she was head over heels for Kevin however as beautiful and as amazing as this sounds as an outsider their relationship was anything but Sapphire was pouring her entire life into this man. Unfortunately, she came to her sister a couple of times claiming that he was abusive towards her. Now, I know absolutely no details about this. I don't know how reliable this information is. This is just something that I saw her sister state. But to make things even more tricky and upsetting, 
Kevin was married <laughs> and he had been married for 30 years and he had two children and not a single person knows if Sapphire even knew this information. She seemed to be posting constantly about him on her social media, but when you looked at her friends list, there was no person named Kevin Shelton listed as her friend. He never seemed to have any communication with her on social media. He didn't have any pictures of her on any of his social media or anything like that. While everyone that knew her knew about him, no one that knew him knew anything about her. It's said that she had recently confronted him about wanting to marry him and continue deeper into their relationship, and obviously he was already married and that could never happen. Since she was suggesting getting married and was very pushy about it and very open about him on social media, this is what leads a lot of people, including authorities, to believe that she had no idea he was married. So he had this entire separate life away from his family and was just completely tricking her and thinking she was in this beautiful relationship. This is said to have caused quite a bit of tension in their relationship and I believe this could have started the events that led to her assumed death. The days after Sapphire was last seen, which again was on October 15th, that's the last day that her sister spoke to her on the phone, it's a blur of strange events, mostly surrounding Kevin's behavior. It seemed like the relationship was this dream to Sapphire, but it was turning into Kevin's worst nightmare because she was pushing more and more and more to have him more involved in her life and in a permanent way, which obviously, being married, he couldn't do. So on October 19th, the day that Sapphire was reported a missing person, her family had been trying to contact her and was receiving absolutely no response, which was out of character for her. They saw that her car was still sitting outside of her home, but she appeared to be absolutely nowhere, so she was filed as a missing person. And this is when the truth of the past few days and what more than likely happened to Sapphire really started becoming clear. On the 18th of October, the day before Sapphire was reported a missing person, Kevin was found dead in his home in Runnymede by his wife. There was no foul play involved and it was declared suicide by hanging. So obviously, as I said before, there wasn't a connection made here. So finding Kevin wouldn't have immediately rang any bells for Sapphire who had been reported missing the next day because Sapphire and him knew about the relationship and people in Sapphire's life did, but no one from Sapphire's life really knew anything about Kevin other than when he was with her. So obviously, that is one of the first places that Sapphire's sister was going to look, knowing the past things she had been told by Sapphire about the abusive tendencies of the relationship, and that's when Sapphire's sister found out that Kevin had died by suicide the day before. So she was so shocked by this, obviously, that she wanted to double check this information for herself because she had this feeling in her gut that if he had killed himself and Sapphire was missing, this was absolutely connected. So she went out of her way to find his wife's home and asked her herself, and this is when she found out that he had, in fact, killed himself. This is obviously when everyone started puzzling things together. This is obviously when Kevin's wife found out that he had been having an affair with Sapphire, and this is when authorities finally could have something to work with. This is also when authorities decided to follow his trail, hoping that it would lead to Sapphire. So we're going to rewind now to October 17th, so just two days after Sapphire last spoke to her sister. Kevin's movements were tracked using surveillance videos, ATMs, license plate readers, and they were trying to follow what he was doing in that time frame. Kevin's blue 2002 Porsche was captured at a McDonald's drive through in Atlantic City, and in the passenger seat of his car was Sapphire, but through the footage, it was very obvious they were in some sort of very heated argument. She was throwing her hands. He seemed very irritated. Then shortly after, Kevin's car is seen getting on the Atlantic City Express Expressway and then taking exit 12 to Hamilton. So just after getting onto the highway, just minutes after they both left the McDonald's in the same vehicle, Kevin called his mother, and this was all at about 8.48 p.m., and he told his mother that he would be stopping by. But just 11 minutes later, he called her back and said he would no longer be coming. But by tracking his movements, authorities saw that he was still heading in the same direction of her home. 
He continued his drive towards Bridgeton, and then according to the last ping on Sapphire's phone and pings from Kevin's phone, they drove to the end of Sanitarium Road around 10 p.m. The phone stopped at the end of Sanitarium Road, and there were multiple calls back and forth in this time frame from Sapphire's phone to Kevin's phone, and then from Kevin's phone to Sapphire's phone, which seemed very odd to authorities because the location isn't where you would need to call someone that you were supposedly with. Sanitarium Road is a dead end road like it is surrounded by farmland you would absolutely have to know the area to know to even get here and interestingly enough it was actually just two miles away from his mother's home and he would have had to drive past her home in order to get there so this didn't make sense as to why they decided not to go to his mother's home if they were passing it anyways activity showed that Kevin remained on sanitarium road for about an hour and a half to possibly two hours before he finally left and went to Elk before heading back to Atlantic City where he arrived at around 2 a.m. But at this point, Sapphire's phone wasn't sending off any more pings. So the last place she was known to be was on Sanitarium Road. I don't really know what his activities were immediately after that, but I do know that he then returned his Porsche to his home and swapped it out for his gold Ford Explorer for the day of the 18th. And this is the day that he was found deceased. So that morning at 10.39 in the morning, he called his son and he called a couple of times and his son didn't answer at first, but the last time that he finally called his son, his son picked up. And what Kevin said is probably one of the most telling things that has led investigators to believe what they believe today. When Kevin was on the phone with his son, he told him that things got really out of hand, he seemed incredibly frantic, and he said that he'd be going to prison for 15 plus years for domestic violence, but he wouldn't explain to his son what was going on, what happened, who he was talking about, and then the phone call just ended. According to his bank accounts, Kevin then went to Home Depot just around 11.01, right after talking to his son, and he purchased rope and a utility knife. After leaving, he placed a couple of phone calls to his attorney friend, this is someone who had represented him before legally, but all of these calls went unanswered. The final call from Kevin's phone was made at 1245 and it was to his wife and just 15 minutes later at 1 p.m. is when his wife went down to the basement to find him deceased and everyone was kind of describing the scene and he was wearing a black and white striped shirt and they said the resemblance to a uniform you would wear in prison was absolutely uncanny and it was chilling almost. It's almost like he realized he had done something wrong and this was his own way of punishing himself before anyone else could punish him. He had even left a suicide note asking for God to have mercy on him, but the note didn't ever mention Sapphire. It said absolutely nothing about her. There wasn't a separate note addressed to her. It was only addressed to his wife and his kids. So now they have the timeline of what exactly happened with Kevin and they knew that Kevin was with Sapphire the night before he decided to take his own life and because of all the circumstances the assumptions they were jumping to when it came to Sapphire were not good ones. They decided to zone in on Sanitarium Road because this road is ideal for going out and doing bad things and potentially dumping a body. The road has an unnamed pond on it. You wouldn't know about this pond unless again you lived in the area and the pond is shared by three separate farms. Authorities went to check this location with cadaver dogs and at a spot right near the water one of the dogs picked up a scent. The scent led them just a few feet where the dog alerted again and then to a patch of grass just another few feet away where they found a wig and this wig looked identical to one of the ones that Sapphire was last known to be wearing. But this wasn't it. Right beside the wig was a pair of sunglasses that had been seen in some surveillance footage that they found of the days before her disappearance. And they also found a receipt and the bank account linked to this receipt, it was a casino receipt, was one that belonged to Kevin Shelton. Fresh tire marks were also seen by all of these items so it appeared as if someone had driven down to the pond, did a U-turn, threw all of these items out and then left. But obviously much more than that happened because Kevin sat there for about an hour and a half. 
so they decided next to move on to the water itself. While all of this was happening, they decided to send both the wig and the sunglasses in to be DNA tested, and they ended up finding more than one source of DNA on the wig, which just led them to an inconclusive result. So there was no way that they could 100% say that this wig was sapphires. It had obviously been worn by a few different people, and the sunglasses had absolutely no DNA on them. So the only thing they knew for sure was that this receipt definitely came out of of Kevin's car and these other items very well could have belonged to Sapphire but there was no way to prove it with DNA. Authorities at this point started a full-blown search of the pond. They used marine police, sonar, helicopters, any piece of equipment that could potentially help them search this pond was brought in. But they ran into a massive, massive issue. There were way too many fish in the pond. The foliage was absolutely insane. So despite using all of this advanced technology, they couldn't 100% say that she wasn't in this pond. Because they felt like they weren't able to search the lake properly the way that they had been doing it, they decided to ask for a second warrant to search it again in hopes of draining it so they could see much better. They could drain this water, they could actually walk through it, they could check under all the foliage, you know, get past all these fish. But unfortunately, that warrant was completely denied. The three surrounding farms had runoff that went directly into this pond, and if you know anything about that, it can create a massive environmental risk and health hazard by draining it because the pond itself was connected to, what is the Cohansi River? I think is what it's called. I could be pronouncing that wrong, but I'm pretty sure the pond directly would be drained into the Cohansi River. It could make a lot of people sick. It would cost a ton of money to drain it and then fill it back up. It just would have been an absolute disaster and they felt like the risks did not outweigh the possible benefits. Atlantic City, where Sapphire was from, as well as Cumberland County, where these items and the pond were located, claimed to be working so perfectly together. They said they were, you know, assisting each other in the different searches, sharing information, but that wasn't exactly the truth because Cumberland County was not at all convinced that Sapphire was there. They didn't believe she was in the pond. They didn't even think that she was in their county, but Atlantic City said that there was no other bit of information that ever took them away from the pond. That's where the phone last pinged, that's where they found these items that belonged to her, they were pretty sure, and that's where they found the receipt. So with all of this information leading to this pond, they felt no reason to be drawn anywhere else. And this just created more conflict because obviously this pond needed to be drained in order to successfully look for her body, but when the county itself doesn't even believe she's in there and isn't convinced, there's really not much you can do. Authorities decided next to check Kevin's Porsche for any sort of signs of a struggle because after all, they had been at the McDonald's, they were arguing with each other in the drive through and they did not expect to stumble across what they did, which was essentially a giant crime scene. Both blood from Kevin as well as Sapphire was found spattered throughout the entire car. It was very apparent to authorities that there had been a massive struggle and it indicated to police that Sapphire unfortunately was more than likely deceased and at the hands of Kevin. And this is where they encountered yet another wall. At this point, they had all of this mounting evidence against the fact that Kevin more than likely had murdered Sapphire. They felt so confident in this that they said if he were still alive, they would have charged him already at this point. Hopefully that would have led to her body. Sapphire was last seen in Kevin's car, the same car that her blood was found everywhere in. Her phone pinged at the lake, the same lake where her potential belongings were found, the same lake that Kevin sat at in the middle of the night for an hour and a half. Authorities strongly believe that all those phone calls that were made between Sapphire's phone and Kevin's phone were his way of creating this alibi. They thought he, you know, very last minute decided to murder her and this was his frantic and desperate attempt at creating this alibi not even realizing that authorities would obviously trace the phones and the phones were literally in the exact same location. He admitted to his son that something got out of hand. Granted, he did not say what exactly, but he obviously was guilty of something and he even said himself he was be going to prison for domestic violence. So it was just a giant mess and the only two people who knew exactly what happened were both 
more than likely gone. So the search turned from where is Sapphire, is this connected, to a giant search for Sapphire's body. Authorities started believing it was very possible that maybe Kevin had killed her right after leaving the McDonald's. So he made this phone call to his mom and then they think that somewhere in that 11 minute time period before he called her back to say, hey, I'm not coming anymore, this is more than likely the time frame in which something happened. And they believed it was very possible that he didn't dump her body into the lake, that maybe he just drove out there to throw all of her belongings to kind of, I guess, mess the trail up. So obviously her phone would have pinged here, but that doesn't necessarily mean she was with it. And he could have just used that as a dumping spot to not ever let them find her body, but to keep them going on this wild goose chase. There were other authorities and people involved that strongly believed the only reason that the receipt and all of those different things ended up right there is because he drug her body out of the car and into the lake. But I feel like at that point there would have been blood there. Um, I feel like if there was so much blood all over the car, if he were to drag her out, there would have been an obvious trail that would have been left from that. And since they didn't find that, it has me questioning if her body is even there to begin with. They decided to check all of the places he was last known to be, all the different towns that he went to, all the different routes that he took, exits that he took, and they searched all these places as thoroughly as possible, thinking it's very possible he dumped her body just out on the side of the highway but every single one of these searches were fruitless. It seemed like the answer was right in front of their face, but they kept coming up empty-handed. They couldn't search the pond more extensively. They couldn't question Kevin to maybe hope that he would crack and tell them what happened. They even went as far in their searches as searching over top of other people's graves. They went to all of the local cemeteries and double-checked that there were no bodies on top of another person's body because they thought, you know, it's very possible he was trying to conceal this as much as possible. So if that doesn't tell you how desperate these people were to hopefully find her and how sure they are that she was murdered, I don't know what does. Is it common for authorities to essentially solve a crime and not be able to at the very least prosecute so this through everyone involved through a loop. This was an entirely new territory. Just eight months after Sapphire's disappearance, authorities came forward and reached out to the public and they were begging for help to piece together this puzzle that they had so desperately tried to solve but couldn't find any more answers to. <sighs> Sapphire's family needed closure. You know, she had a six-year-old son. She had all of these people that had no idea what was going on. You know, Kevin's family didn't even know where to begin. Not only did Kevin end his life, but he possibly was having an affair and then went on to kill this woman. So it was this giant mess. And all authorities wanted was to locate Sapphire's body and bring her home back to her family so they could have closure, so they could have a proper burial, so that her son could say a proper goodbye to his mother. So they were hoping that someone out in the public noticed something strange. So they asked that everyone think back and think about the blue Porsche and the gold Ford Explorer. Think about all the different routes that they had publicly announced that he had taken. And they hoped that someone maybe saw a strange car that day parked on the side of the highway or the car acting erratically. They were just heavily relying on someone happening to remember something odd that they saw, but even after sending out this plea to the public, no new information came in. They do believe 100% that she very likely could be in Hopewell, which is the area where the pond was. This is where his mother lived. This was somewhere important and special to him. It's where he went after everything more than likely happened. So they asked all the hunters in the area and everyone who was out driving to just keep an eye out. But here we are years later and her body has still not been found. This isn't really like any other case that I have covered. And it reminds me a lot of the Timothy Pitson case and just this giant frustration by the family left behind, by the authorities that so desperately need to solve something. But when a murder-suicide happens or, you know, a supposed or an alleged murder-suicide because nothing technically has been proven, um, 
you know, all those answers are just gone. And the fact that they have so desperately searched all these different areas and come up empty handed, he only had so much time and they tracked him. They know exactly where he went thanks to his phone. And the fact that her body is just not in any of those locations makes absolutely no sense. Authorities are still tirelessly trying to work on this. I'm pretty sure they still strongly believe that she could be in that pond. I personally am not 100% convinced. However, because they've checked everywhere so thoroughly except for the pond, which is technically where her phone last ping, there is a pretty large chance. There has been absolutely no activity from Sapphire since then. Her phone stopped then, her car was still at home, nothing in her home has been touched. No social media, no bank accounts, no nothing. And at this point, authorities are again just asking everyone to keep an eye out for her body, share her story, share her face, share these different areas because there still could be someone out there that maybe was just traveling through and they saw this car acting bizarrely in this area and they just didn't know anything about it. They could be in their hometown a couple states away. So while it seems kind of silly to share a story like this, you just never know who was traveling through at that point of time. As I always say, I send all of my love out to Sapphire's family. I cannot even imagine what a nightmare this has been to go through. Um, you know, I also send my love out to Kevin's family because they have no idea and this all happened at once and that's a lot to handle as well. And if he did do something that is not on them, please send everyone your positive thoughts and hopefully her body is eventually found. I don't think anyone at this point believes that she's just out there somewhere, um, but always obviously keep that in the back of your mind. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to Sapphire's story. Don't forget to keep her in your thoughts and share her story wherever you possibly can because someone always knows something and that could change this case entirely and she could finally be brought home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to become a part of the Helen fam if you haven't noticed that yet. <laughs> so hopefully we can bring them home together and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!